morning, people. Good morning. Well, it's morning here. Um, it's um September 16th. As you can see, I'm still home. I'm not as I'm not in Addis Ababa. Um, I went to the airport on the 14th. Um, had some issues with my visa. I was flying with Qatar Airways. As I tried to check in, you know, I had my negative COVID test. Had my passport. Normally, when I fly to Addis Ababa, I get a visa on arrival. So this time I was informed that I needed an e-visa and that's a visa that you get online and you normally have to get that a couple of days before you travel. And so, um, you know, I was like, I don't, I don't see where that's necessary. I've never done that. And they said due to COVID, you know, they changed the process, but I searched online, I called the Ethiopian embassy and they said, that's just not true. You know, I didn't need a visa on, a, I didn't need an e-visa, I could have gotten the visa on arrival. So, you know, as I, I, I spoke to numerous people with Qatar Airways, you know, after I left the airport, because I couldn't board the plane, eventually they told me that, you know, their employees made a mistake, but still they didn't want to, you know, pay for the mistake. So I had to pay an additional $800 to book another flight, which leaves out today at um, 7.55 p.m. Um, today, September 16th. So I'm two days late and you know, I had some I had some pretty important things I have to do in Addis Ababa. So it was really detrimental that I be there, that I leave out on the 14th. Like I said, that's not possible. So we're gonna leave out today, which is the 16th at um, 7.55 p.m. And you know, I, I, like I said, I talked to so many people at Qatar Airways, a lot of customer service people, it was hard to get talk with management. Actually, I never talked to management. I just got a bunch of email addresses. And again, they admitted it was their mistake, but they didn't want to own up to the mistake. So I lost money, I lost valuable time, and the flight there has two layovers, and I actually have to fly to Qatar, which is normal. But also after that, I have to fly and spend four hours in Sudan. So it's gonna be about 28 hour flight. And um, you know, I'm just thank God that I was able to get a, another COVID test. It came back in time. You know, I was able to get the EVs in less than 24 hours. So, you know, I'm very thankful for that. God is always good. I just wanna keep you all updated and let you know what's going on. I'll see you in Addis Ababa. temporarily stuck in the airport in Khartoum, Sudan. Um, I don't know what the issue is. They all speak Arabic. I don't speak Arabic, so hopefully it gets resolved soon. Hopefully I can make it out of Sababa. Pray for me. So they detained me um, at the airport in Khartoum, Sudan. They got me in a holding room. Um, supposedly I need a Ethiopian passport and an American passport, which I don't even think is possible to have um, dual citizenship. I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, as I said before in my current video, pray for me there. I'm not sure why they're detaining me. I think they mean they 